Hey, welcome to Mountain Cooking with Missy, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an original Kentucky stack cake, y'all. It's so good, and Mackenzie can't wait to get into it, and y'all, this is going to be a fun video. So we're getting started with our dried apple uh, filling, and this is about two pounds of dried apples that I got at an Amish market, y'all. I hit the mother load uh, last month and was able to find me uh, quite a few dried apples. And so um, I always, I store mine like my mommy did. We put ours in Ziploc bags and freezer bags and put, just put them in the freezer. So what I did, I added them here to my kittle and I added about, uh, I think four, four and a half cups of water. Yeah, about four and a half cups of water to them and I'm just going to let these cook down for about an hour and a half hour 15 minutes and until they're tender or until I can mash them down I will usually use a, a, a potato masher and and do them like that but after they cook we're going to add our sugar and our cinnamon and stuff so what, what kind of masher tater masher there we go <laughs> it's a tater masher I use my mamma's old timey tater masher y'all y'all get to see it all right now it's been about 20 minutes or so and i've been stirring them every five minutes or so and i'm gonna but i'm gonna let you know look most of the liquid has been absorbed i'm gonna add a little more a little bit more water because they're not hardly where i want them to be uh, but they're starting to fall apart if you see here with my this wooden spoon i'm able to chop them up pretty good so I'm going to let these cook about 30 more minutes and I'm going to cover them back up and make sure you don't turn your heat too high. They'll scorch and they're almost ready, y'all. Alrighty. Now after about 30 or 40 minutes, this is what their your apples are going to look like. I have been stirring these. You want to stir them about every five or so minutes after you cover them. You got to babysit them a little bit. You don't want them to scorch. And I have been, you do add water as you go, a little bit of water as you go. You don't want them real liquidy, but you do want some liquid in there because you don't want your stack cake to be dry when you put your apples on. Now I'm going to add a cup of sugar. You can add more if you want, but a cup is plenty. You can add you can actually do a half a cup if you wanted um, because dried apples are naturally sweet they're a little bit sweeter uh, and this is a teaspoon of cinnamon and I'm going to stir them and y'all you should smell these look at that already All right, look at that. See, and also when you put your sugar in there, it's going to create like a syrup, guys. Excuse me. Right, let's go. Why, yeah, if you want to. Now I'm just going to take my mamaw's tater masher, y'all, and give them a good mash. You can use one of those, what do you call it, immersion, 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 <laughs> immersion blender. blender if you want it also, but... That'll work, but these are smelling good. Oh yeah. There's nothing, nothing beats the dried apples, y'all. So I'm going to let these hang out here. And I got my burner turned down and I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to let these cool off. And that way we already got these made up. And then we will be ready to uh we'll get our cake made. The dried apples will be ready. All righty, y'all. I'm excited to get ready on this cake. This is, like I said, it is an, uh, an old-timey recipe. This is an old Kentucky recipe, and it's stack cake, so I mean about seven or eight layers. And it's like a cook. They're like cookies. They're like little thin, little thin cookie layers and kind of like a shortbread cookie with some ginger in it and um a little time consuming but well worth it y'all and i will tell you um i don't know if you call it legend or folklore or whatever but stories 
of the Appalachian stack cake come from years ago. It was supposedly uh, uh, like a wedding cake, like an Appalachian wedding cake. And all the, all the bride's family would bring like a layer um, to put this cake together. And once everybody come together, they put the layer, uh, bring the layers and then put the apple filling on it. And then they would, it was like to bring her like good luck or something. But I've heard that story. Have you ever, y'all, if you've heard any kind of stories about the origins of a stack cake, let me know. But I have heard that. And, um, but it's just interesting to know that, um, I love stories like that, actually. But I remember having stack cake when I was little, y'all. Stack cake was a staple uh, dessert. My Aunt Lucy, my great Aunt Lucy, my mom's um, aunt, she was born in 1898, and she would make stack cakes. And we'd have homecomings every summer down in Clay County, Kentucky, where uh, my mom's family was from. And we would go, and uh, I remember... We'd stay all night with Aunt Lucy a day or two before the homecoming would be. They always had homecoming all in the graveyard. And she would make the stack cake about a couple of days at least ahead. Of, and I remember watching her make these. And she baked hers in a skillet, but I'm going to bake mine the easy way and on like a sheet pan. That's the way that it's easier, guys. That way you can knock out three or four layers at a time. But I remember stack cake and dried apples. I mean... Y'all, it was the only way to preserve them, and they, it's so good. So I'm going to read off what's going to go in the cake layer. So you're going to need a half a cup of shortening, half a cup of sugar, one egg, third cup of sorghum, and a half a cup of buttermilk, and three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of soda, baking soda, but my mommy always called it soda and a half a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of ginger, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And what I like to do is, y'all, I got a fly in the house. So if you see a fly go through here, I've tried to get him. It's on my nerves. I can't, just gets on my nerves. <laughs> y'all hate flies in the house. I know I do. So three and a half cups of flour, and this is how I measure flour. And you level it off. There's one. And I like to put the dry ingredients in, like the spices and the salt and everything together with the flour. Level that off. Of course, I'm using white lily all purpose. And spoon it in there. You don't ever want to pack flour in, y'all, because it will be too much. Too much and a half a cup and this is these are quarter cups I want to use too so get that in there one all right there we go and level that off now this is the ginger the salt and the sodi and what I do is just put it all together and I just mix that together Okay, so we're going to cream the sugar and the shortening together. So I already got the shortening in there. I'm going to add in the sugar. I'm going to turn on the mixer and I'm going to blend that. I guess it would help if I would plug it in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's my fault. I unplug everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're not perfect. Nobody cares. All right. So you want to cream. Cream that together for about five minutes. All right. Now I'm going to add in the egg. And I'm going to add in the molasses or sorghum. You can use either or. I'm still, y'all, I really don't know all the difference between, we never made molasses or nothing, so I know people that did, but if you know the difference between molasses and sorghum, let me know, because I honestly do not know the, the real difference between, between them. Now you're going to mix that together, then, oh, let me give you another trick. This is the buttermilk. I add my vanilla in my buttermilk, and I just eyeball it as usual, and I will set that aside. I'm going to drizzle. I use my buttermilk to alternate when I start adding my flour. We're going to do this for about 
three to four minutes. All right, so we're gonna start adding in the flour and our buttermilk and vanilla. And I love the Madagascar Pure Vanilla Extract by Vanilla Bean Kings. I'm gonna be putting their link in uh, the description and in the comments, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, I will put it in there, the info, because I really like their extract. Now, on low, or you're gonna have flour everywhere, don't wanna, you don't wanna do this on high, trust me. You'll look like a ghost. And what I do, I just add a little in at a time, and then drizzle in my buttermilk and vanilla mixture. I am using whole buttermilk. You can use the low fat kind too, it don't matter. Well, why would you want to? <laughs> yeah, why would you want, sometimes it's hard to find though. I mean, some people say they can't find it and that's true. So as you can see, this is kind of like a thick dough. And let me, I don't know if I mentioned it wrong, I don't think I did. Make sure everything's room temperature. Your buttermilk, your egg, your molasses, which molasses I don't keep the refrigerator anyway. Make every, make sure everything is room temperature. Uh, that's a good rule when you're baking anyway, y'all. Making sure that your eggs and your liquids are usually room, are room temperature um, helps in baking. Y'all, it may just be a cake, but it smells so good already. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna put the rest in there. As you can see, it's very doughy. And I'm going to. Let me raise up and get a shot. Yeah, scrape the rest of my buttermilk in there. Whole buttermilk is thicker. And I'm gonna stop it because you don't wanna over mix it. And I got some flour left, let me. Just... All right, so this is the fun part. <laughs> and I'm, you want to put out a little flour on your surface. I got butcher paper, or you can use wax paper, or if you got a marble, or a, what do you call it, a granite countertop, you don't need to do that. But I just kind of put out a little bit of flour on um, my surface here. And I'm going to bring the dough out in one big clump and get it all out. Then I'm going to divide it up. You don't want to mess with it. Now, you're not going to need this. You don't need to knead it. You, you don't want these to be, you don't want to be tough. Set this all to the side. And all I'm going to do is just keep my hands floured a little bit. And I'm going to... Roll this out like in a loaf. Or like, kind of like a log. Like that right there. And then I'm going to divide this out into uh, about seven layers. Seven to eight. Let's see how, how many we end up with. So let me grab my knife. Okay, so I got my log... Uh, ready. This is probably about 10 inches maybe. It's not hardly a foot, but it's about 10 inches. And I'll just score it with my knife uh, to try to get about seven equal pieces. If they're not equal, it don't matter y'all, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that makes me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. And now all you gotta do is you pinch them up and cut them in half, cut them in two, and you're gonna make smooth round balls out of them. Okay guys, now I'm doing a voiceover for this segment because for some reason, the sound did not come through on this part of our video. So I am doing a voiceover to let you know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so 
I am baking mine in a nine inch cake pan. You can use a skillet. You can use any round baking dish will work, but you want a, at least an eight to nine inch um, baking dish of some kind. And I'm taking one ball of dough and putting it in the bottom of the uh, cake pan. Spray it really well with some Baker's Joy. You don't want it to stick y'all. All your hard work um, will just be down the drain if they stick. You don't want that. Keep your hands well floured as you press down. Press it down as even as you can. Make sure there's no holes and um, these will turn out really well. So I bake mine about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I think I already mentioned my oven is at 350 degrees. Bake them for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're done. Bring them out and let them cool before uh, you flip them out. The layers are done. A little labor of love here. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you, if you do them in the cake pan, run you like a little butter knife. Uh, this is one of my little offset little spatula things that I cross cakes with. You run it around the edge, you can get your layers out. Very good, look at that. And they're very delicate, so be careful with them. And see, like that. And if, see that one cracked in the middle, that's all right. It's Just still, gonna let the apple yeah. see through. <laughs> yeah, it's still intact around the edges. I'll still be able to flip it out, but it ain't gonna matter, y'all. And the, the ones that I did on the paper are the same way. They're they're just they're very thin, but they're fragile. Just be careful with them. But so now we're going to do the fun part, putting the apples in. All right. So here we go. First layer, and I hope I don't break it. Yeah. All right. So. You want about a cup of your apples in your filling. Now, let me tell you, these are cooled off, but my apples are warm, and I want I want it like that. To me, I thought I like putting the apples on warm. They're not piping hot, but putting them on warm to me helps um, the apples soak in better, and I like it like that. So that's the way I do it. Now, y'all, let me tell you about the apples. Uh, this cake is not an overly sweet cake. It's got sugar, but there's not a lot of sugar in it. And the apples were not very sweet. If you want to add more sugar, you can. If you want to add brown sugar, you can. Brown sugar will make uh, make your apples a little darker. If you want to add more cinnamon, you can. If you want to add apple pie spice, you can. Apple pie spice just has a little bit more spices in it besides cinnamon, like all spice cloves and all that good stuff so you can make this make this how you want but i like the apples about like this I, I i did add a little extra cinnamon to mine because i thought they were a little light but i did ex add some extra cinnamon you can most certainly make this sugar free you can make uh use any kind of sugar substitute that you want for the apples um, now for the cake, I wouldn't know, but when you're making the apples, you can use any kind of sweetener you want. So I like to take it all the way to the edges because the purpose of these apples is, uh, it's going to soak into your layers. Y'all, you should smell our house. You're starving me to death. Robert's hungry. Love Them his apples, heart. I want a biscuit. Yeah. Oh, they'll, yeah. Fried, gr dried apples, y'all. And don't worry, if you have extra, this, these make the best fried apples ever. They're not going to go to waste. Yeah, I, I, they make, well, they are fried apples. What I meant, they make the best fried apple pies. Okay. Is that right? And they really do. And like Roger said, they're good on your biscuit. Let's put another layer on. Hope I don't break it. And see? All right, just like that. Now, the top layer, I'm not going to put any apples on the top layer. Um, I'm going to let it sit till tomorrow. This cake needs to sit. Better it sits, better it gets. And when, after the apples has kind of been on there and it's soaked down, uh, soaked into the layers, uh, I will dust it with some powdered sugar. And 
but I like a plenty of good apple filling on it. Now I have eaten some stack cake before that's on the dry side. Did you ever never eat dry uh, stack stack cakes, baby? I don't know up? that I've ever eaten a stack cake. Well, I'm about to. He's about to. <laughs> uh, so this is probably about a cup, a cup and a half that I'm of apples that I'm putting on here. So I like to make extra apples. I know this might seem like a lot of apples. But y'all, you don't want to not have enough. There's always a good rule. Like my mommy always said, better to have more. Too much to not enough. Is that right? That exactly should be right. life's motto. Okay. So I'm going to keep going until we get to the top layer. <laughs> what time is it? Taste, Taste test time. time. I'm so excited, guys. That cake. I've waited so patiently. God bless you, Amy. Mm -hmm. Go back for seconds. Yeah, I dusted it with some powdered sugar. Now you could eat this with whipped cream. Yeah. No. Some people say you can. It doesn't. Need we never that. did. We ate them plain, plain Jane, with some powdered sugar on top. Tastes like fall. Fall. Yeah. All right, you want, Dad's gonna get a bite. Right. It's a family affair, and it's not dry. Not at all. Oh. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you, Lord, for this. Mm. Longer it sits, better it gets. Remember that. It's good. I like this. I need coffee. Hey, that's a good idea. All right, y'all. Thank you all. And make sure you like and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, make sure that, like Kendi said, if you make this, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, or especially Facebook, make sure you tag us. And let us see tag your creation. Us. Let us see it. Even if it's ugly. Yeah. We Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It don't have to be pretty to be delicious. No. Correct. No. That's for sure. All right, guys, I will put the recipe in the description and um, in the comments if you're watching on Facebook. And um, let us know what you think. Thank you all for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy, where's nothing fancy. Just, Just good. Bye, Bye, guys. guys.